This episode is with a return guest, Natanya Stamboli, and I am having Natanya back. She was first on, on episode 128. So please go back and listen to that episode. So you have some context about this episode, because we don't go into her backstory at all, but it's really compelling. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have her on was because she, and if you listen to the episode last week, there's some similarities between the two because in terms of why they did what they did and they, they just basically, uh, doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be, you know, what you do in life should be easy and fun because it should come from somewhere deep within and with her, it really does. And so if you, if it's life is complicated, then you're probably not doing what you're meant to do. So in, in your every day. So if it, or if it feels hard, or if it feels like you're pushing a, a boulder up the hill, then you should explore, think about exploring other things, just maybe by doing new activities. It doesn't have to be something like, like, oh, I'm going to quit my job, but just start doing other activities and see what things bring you joy, see what things light you up. And that could lead you in a whole totally different direction. And so that's what happened to her and how she found yoga. So, and then me, I just like wanted to do a podcast and I started inviting people to be on my podcast as guests and here I meet her and then I get to go on a yoga retreat, which like was changed my life really. I mean, in terms of making me feel so much reconnected to who I am. So we talk about the retreat in this episode. Uh, we get into a little bit more about like, you know, yoga and the different things we did and things that like stuck out to me. So, and then we talk about also she's getting ready to do, she does a few times a year, opens up, uh, uh, she has a workshop, it's a free workshop and it exposes people to her and what she, she basically has a goal of them to learn a pose it, in three different poses over the course of the three. It's, it's a workshop, but it's three parts if, if I'm saying that correctly. So uh, yeah, so it's a three part workshop. I think it's over a course of a week. So she's doing that after Christmas. So I wanted to share about that because I'm going to do it and it would be fun to see some of you out there doing it. And maybe we can connect on her uh, workshop. So, uh, and then the only other thing I want to say is that the internet did cut out like two or three times, but it came back really quickly. So hopefully it won't uh, distract you too much. And I don't think there, there was anything lost in, uh, in the, I think, you'll get the context of whatever was happening. So I apologize for that, but sometimes that's, you know, tech doesn't always work out the way you want it to. <laughs> so anyways, I uh, hope you enjoy the episode and a return visit from Nat, my friend, Nat. Welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Lives. And I have a repeat guest on with me today. And she it's, it was on fairly recently. I had her on earlier in the summer. Natanya Stamboli. Hi, Natanya. Hi, Lori. Thanks so much for having me back. Yes. And the reason I'm having her back was totally selfish because I wanted, uh, she was the retreat leader on my amazing Greece retreat. And uh, when I first had her on, I only wanted her to be on to share her experience about having moved from uh, a a, um, what am I trying to say? Brick and mortar yoga studio and like shut down because of COVID. And then she took everything online and has cr created this, you know, over $700,000 business in one year. And I'm sure you're going to hit, go over a million next year. So, and, and you know, the, your whole story about having been working for a family business and being in a toxic relationship and being so like unhappy and just like leaving that all and not even letting money stop you because you made so much less money doing yoga. And then here you are doing what you love and what you're so gifted at. And I got to experience her firsthand. And let me tell you, she is gifted. She is so gifted at, at teaching at yoga at like mental stuff. And I can't recommend her highly more highly enough. I mean, she's just amazing. So I wanted to talk about my retreat experience, but get her perspective. I think it'd be fun to talk about how like she started retreats because she's been doing them for a while. And the funny thing is, and I don't know if you remember this, Natanya, but did I know that you did retreats? Was it was that a conversation after the episode? Okay. Or I think we figured it out on, on, on the podcast the episode. Okay, episode. Okay. I have to re-listen. But yeah, so after the episode ends, because a lot of times with my guests, I talk to them beforehand because I'm just meeting them. And then at the end, we chit chat. And I think we, we, you and I chatted for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's like, yeah, 
I'll send you the information. And oh my gosh, like the Greece trip just spoke to me. And I was like an immediate, I'm going to do it no matter what I'm going to do it. And then I saw the price and I was like, oh my God, that is such a great deal. And then I had, I had flight that like credits. So it didn't even really cost me. I mean, I think it cost me like $30 because you know, when all was said and done for the flight. So, and I think, I don't know about you with COVID, but cause you, you, you do retreats and you've been doing like four a year, I think. Yeah. But I felt myself getting like really in this, cause I'm an extrovert and the year before COVID I went on eight trips. And so I felt myself getting really scared, really scared. Like I'm going to a remote Island in Greece. <laughs> so yeah. And I sent you an email. I was like, oh, is there a hospital there? <laughs> did you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just like did, took my vitamin C and all that, but it was so good for me to get out into the world again. Yeah. And, yeah. Just get out there and then connect in that way. And such that, you know, kind of retreat oriented way where you're just really connecting with people on deep level. And uh, so tell me how you got started with retreats. I got started in 2016. I had right when I started teaching yoga and had decided to change my life and that I was going to go all out and do the thing. Um, I was contacted by someone, I had done a bodybuilding competition like five years prior. And the woman who had actually trained me, who was my fitness trainer for that, saw a post on Facebook that I was now teaching yoga. And she reached out to me and said, Hey, I'm doing a retreat and I want a yoga teacher to come with us to teach yoga. She doesn't teach yoga. She did fitness. And so she's like, would you come with me to Bali? Uh, we'll cover everything. You just need to get yourself there. And you essentially get a free vacation in exchange for a few hours of teaching. And I was like, um, I'm sorry, what? Uh, yes, yes, I will do it. And so I went and that was, you know what? It was actually 2015. That was September, 2015. And, um, immediately I came back from that trip and something woke up inside me. I was like, this is, this is, this came to me for a reason. Uh, I want to do a business way. And so I was like, this can't be that hard. So I found, a, found my first retreat location and put down a deposit and picked a date. And uh, the rest is history. After that, I was just like, let's do more. This is so much fun. And it really is. For me, it is the epitome of, of everything that I do because we get to get out of our day to day. And I think you can do all the personal development that you want, but if you're in the container of your day to day life, you're jarred out of your personal development constantly. And I think there's something so special about going to a place where you are dedicated to being chill, to being with yourself, to being with others. And there are no day to day distractions. It just gives us such uh, it's so much more accessible to really dig into your stuff and have these aha moments and have these moments of clarity when you remove yourself from your daily life. And so yeah. I really, I highly recommend retreats in general for anyone who needs a little guided break. Yeah. And I love that you have the international aspect because you do, you know, you have Mexico, you have Valencia, Spain is coming up. Bali is, you know, and so I like the fact that, um, there's, there's a, there's other people from all over the world. I mean, it was just so neat to see, you know, there was people there from, you know, a lot of European countries, uh, some Americans that are living in Europe. Uh, so a different, totally different lifestyle. So that was really fun. I loved that as well. Um, so yeah, one of the things was for me, cause you know, and one of the things we do at the very beginning of the retreat is we set an intention and I might've said that in the Mike Grease uh, update podcast episode I did, but um, I went with just wanting to get my physicality back. And I really had it well prepared because I had had physical therapy up until like a month before I, I left. And they had given me the all lights and everything, but I really was not where I would like to be. But I was just like, and you are really good at saying, oh, it's just like, you go, you do you, you do you. And so it was like, I just knew I was just going to go and do what I could. And I wasn't going to like measure myself up against, I knew I was going to be the oldest person. I like, I was, I'd have at least that excuse. <laughs> I could just say, oh, granny over here, you know, she can't do all those things. But so I, and I back like five years ago, I had done some pretty incredible things doing 
I just did had one yoga workout in P90X, the Tony Horton thing. Yep. But I, I, and it was so funny to measure myself when I started that program to when I ended, because there were several things in that just one workout that I couldn't do that I could do, but it was a 90 day program. And so I, I wanted to get back there, but I never in a million years thought I could do it like in, in the one week of being in Greece. And so, and I had a lot of fear. That's the other thing is you talk about the mental aspect of how we, we basically make ourselves fail because we, you know, we say, I can't do that, or that looks hard or whatever. We, you know, the voices in our head, uh, in our worst enemy. And it, it's, it's not just like it, regular life. It's like, it's, it's a move. It's just as simple as a move. Right. And so I had this fear that of injury, this fear that I'm going to hurt myself because I had hurt myself before. And so I just went with, I'm just going to, I'm not going to push myself. I'm just going to do, I'm just, gonna, I wanted the retreat more than just the yoga, I think. And, uh, and I love that you said it was an adventure aspect. So, cause I remember when we talked at you, like, oh, it's it. Cause I was like, oh, I want to go on a retreat. And I think you thought it was like, a, you know, just a, a really like eat healthy and I don't know, seances, I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I adventure. Yeah. I love adventure. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so I went with that intention and to be able to do the things that I did just my body responded. And so I don't know if it was like the mental stuff was addressed like with some of the stuff we did. So, so another thing that Tanya does, and maybe you can speak to this is yoga nidra. So we did these yoga nidra in the evening, every, I think we did it every night, but it's a, it's like a meditative yoga. And, and I had had somebody back on a guest, uh, as a guest a long time ago, and she was a yoga nidra teacher and yoga nidra actually had saved her life. She was like suicidal. So I was really excited because I'd never done a yoga nidra and I don't know if doing that in the evening did something to my brain. (laughs) So that prepared me for the morning because the morning yoga sessions were the more sweaty ones. Um, So yeah. Do you want to talk about yoga nidra and what that? Yeah. I mean, I think what you're, what you experienced is a conglomeration of all the things, right? We got you out of your day today. We got you out of your mental stress. And sometimes the fear that we have over um, reactivating old injuries or getting hurt or trying new things are exacerbated by the levels of stress that we're experiencing in our day-to-day life. And when you take yourself out, you already remove one layer of that stress. And so you can start to take bigger risks and notice your fear starting to, to fall away. And you're also in a group of like 20 people all so scared and also doing the thing. So that group dynamic is, is helpful too. And Yoga Nidra could have very well played into that. It's a really powerful practice. My partner, Gary teaches it. I'm not certified, but it's, um, it, it is a guided meditation. So you're laying down on your back, super comfortable. You want to feel no discomfort at all. The whole point is to kind of trail off into la la land. And if you're uncomfortable, you're going to be fidgeting and readjusting. And so you get really comfy and then you're guided through a, a series of, of steps that include paying attention to your breath, uh, bringing your awareness to different body parts, visualizing different things, repeating affirmations to yourself. And depending on how the Nidra meditation is guided, the, the, the guide drops little seeds or plants seeds that take root in your subconscious mind while you're sleeping, while you're going about your day. It is a science and a technology. So absolutely, that must have played a role as well. Yoga Nidra takes you to that place right before sleep, right? If you guys have experienced the the experience of being asleep, but awake at the same time, like you can't move your body, you're asleep, but your, your mind is conscious. That's where Nidra takes you by design. And in that place where your brain waves have slowed, uh, you're very susceptible to, uh, to messages that come mm-hmm. at you and through you. And so that is the purpose of it is to put you in a receptive, open, calm state and plant seeds for future growth. So I love that you experienced that. That's yeah. Incredible. I remember after one session, Gary was like, you know, we were coming back from being, you know, the, the really peaceful part. And he says it's a good time to journal. So you might want to journal, like what was the color that you saw? <laughs> Cause he had taken us through a, a, a meditation where you see a ball and what color is it? And he's asking us questions. And one of the people was like, 
oh, there, there was, a, there was colors. There was, a, there was a ball, and it was really funny because yeah, everybody has their own experience as they go through it, and some people really and like, some people fall asleep. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's the thing with meditation, right? Is people think, oh, I can't meditate. I can't shut off my thoughts. You can't shut off your thoughts. Your thoughts are going. The whole point of meditation is to selectively choose your thoughts and only the ones that are conducive to your growth and not the ones that pull you down. And Nidra, like your body will either fall asleep or stay alert. But if you fall asleep, the the thing that we say is don't fight it. Like that's what your body needed. The goal is to stay in between that awake and asleep state but your body needed the sleep. So you needed the sleep. So yeah, people come out of the meditation. They're going, wait, there was a cloud. There were colors. I don't know. I was snoring. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. The time. yeah. Yeah. And it was funny too. Cause I was thinking about this after the fact is I got my own room so you can get your own room or you can get for less expense. You can share a room. Yeah, and, yeah. um, I've done that before, like randomly shared a room and I've I liked it a lot. You know, I like it's been, it's fun, you know, cause I'm an mm-hmm. extrovert. And so I found myself seeing the connection of the roommates, the people that are staying together. I was like, I, I wish I had a roommate. So that was really funny. Yeah, it was really cool to see the different connections. And the other thing that I thought was crazy was that there are people who are booking the next retreat already. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know what you're going to do because eventually you're not going to be able to accommodate anybody because you're going to have so many repeat people. We'll just add more retreats. I'm not just worried about it. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, we're very very lucky, but also we work hard. Um, we have a very high repeat rate, um, mm-hmm. at least 20% of every retreat, sometimes more is repeat, um, retreaters. So yeah, I love that people mm-hmm. love it enough that they want to come back even before the one retreat is over. It just yeah. really is. It really is unique. And like you were saying at the beginning, like when people hear the word retreat, there are a lot of different kinds of retreat, but the connotation is silence, vegan food, no alcohol, no noise, very quiet, very still. And if you have, if you cross my path or come in any way near me, you will know that that is not who I am. <laughs> I'm much more about fun and breaking through fear and with a healthy dose of balance, right? We need the chill and the soft and the quiet. But we don't have a stereotypical yoga treat. Um, and so we do all the things. We'll meditate and then drink wine and it's great. Why not? Moderation, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we really try to offer something for everyone. And my thing, like I got into yoga and meditation and these transformational practices through challenging myself, through learning how to stand on my hands, through wanting to do cool things with my body. Had that not been available coming in through the physical, I probably never would have found these practices and never would have changed my life in this way. And so we try to create a retreat experience that appeals to everyone. So we've got the workouts for people who don't yoga. We've got the arm balances for people who want to do that. We have outdoor adventures, snorkeling, hiking, different things, depending on where we go to appeal to those. And once everyone's there, then we sneak in all the more transformational stuff that people wouldn't necessarily gravitate to. But once they're in the container of the retreat, you're much more open. Oh yeah, let me check that out. Let me try that and see how I like it. And so it's a little bit by design. And we want to take people who are like, oh, I roll yoga retreat and present them with, oh, wow, yoga retreat. Okay. Yeah. I like this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I have to just give you creds because we got into the island an hour later than normal. And it was going to be late anyway. So by the time we got to the hotel and by the time we got settled in our rooms, it was like three 30 in the morning. And so, so Nat still had, so I call her Nat now, but um, yeah, she still had the class at, I think it was seven 30 in the morning. And she was really cool. She was like, you don't have to come if you don't want, but I'm going to be there for anybody who wants. And I know people showed up. I did not show up, <laughs> but I'm also glad I did that because I did the, the, Gary's workout, which is, um, what do you call it? It's like more cardi- it. cardio. Yeah. High intensity interval training. Yeah. 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 But it was it, again, you know, you see hit, you know, high intensity. It was like, uh, you know, but I'm just like, I'm just going to do what I can do and I'm not going to do anything crazy. And he repeat, you know, it's just so much reinforced that you're not going to be judged or you're not gonna be looked at. And I just stayed in the back and, you know, cause I have a repaired knee. Uh, and I, I was surprised I did so much that I did. And then we had a, a chill yoga after that. I swear I never really got sore from any of that. 
And, um, you know, I just paced myself. So the day we went, we went on this like super long hike, uh, and uphill. And I think, I think I turned on my, my, my measure thing and it was like four and a half miles, but I didn't even do it at the beginning. So I know it was like a, like a long hike and I did not do the yoga session that morning. And I was so glad. And I was just like, I really, really did pace myself. And I think it's because you guys kept reinforcing that, mm-hmm. which was great. And I, I, and there was a couple of people who were in their fifties that were there and, and a lot, you know, I never felt like, I, oh, you know, oh, there, there's, she, she can't do anything or there's granny or, you know, I just felt like I fit in and it was so amazing. Uh, so it was something, and I guess you could say I stepped out of my comfort zone because it's something I never did before, yeah. but I was just like, when I saw that and, you know, it's on my vision board, it was like, this is like, I, I can't not do this. Right. Universe. Yeah. 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 So it's so funny because she, Nat has, you know, this yogi flight school. And so one of the things that makes her different is that she teaches people to stand on their hands. And so when you think you're, you're like, you get to a certain age with standing on my hands, I don't think I can do that. I can't, but, and so that, that would have ruled me out from me probably ever signing up to yogi flight school. But when I went on my retreat on the retreat, I was able to get up in a crow, which I hadn't done for five years. And I thought I'd never be able to do again. And then on the, the, what she did an um, arm inversion workshop, one of the, well, she did it more than once, but I went to one and I didn't go the first one. Well, you did two different kinds. And mm-hmm. so you did one kind two days and you did the other kind two days. So, mm-hmm. so the first day of the, the, the kind that I thought I can do, I went and, uh, and so this was handstands and headstands and she showed us a procedure, I guess, or a technique to, of walking instead of, you know, people tend to, and I used to do this too, is you would go to do a handstand and you would go facing the wall and you throw yourself up. So your legs hit the wall. Right. Yep. But she teaches you to go, like you turn around and you could probably describe it better, but you walk your legs up the wall. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but you came over and on the second try, I did it. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I, I'm I fully transparent. I didn't like, I didn't do a full on headstand where I was a handstand where I was walking on my hands, Whatever. But, but I had, I had one foot off the wall and one foot on the wall. And I, but that walking up the wall was, was to me such an accomplishment, such an yeah. accomplishment. Yeah. And, that's hard. and you did it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But, um, and you also really teach how to stack your, you know, your, well, she says stack your, you know, whatever, but um, stack your, your bones on yourself. So you don't like, it's when you're out, when you, you're not in the right technique that you could get injured. And so you, you're just like, you don't need to worry about that if you just do the technique right. And so it's, yeah. and then that's how I got up into the crow so easily. Cause, and you say there's, there, and there's a, you know, people just like, they get on the crow and they, I don't think anybody ever told me to look forward. I don't think anybody, you know, the whole, like getting up into it and how to prepare yourself for it, which is also great. So anyways, I went backwards into Nat's program. Right. So I, I, I think I went through the intro before the retreat, but I never did any of the exercises or any of the workouts, uh, just went to the retreat. So she's getting ready to relaunch and her yogi flight school and she's gonna do a chat you do a challenge first is that we do it's a it's a live workshop series so it's three three workshops yeah okay and so in that workshop what happens uh I teach three different it's a week-long workshop and I'll, I'll teach three different poses so each each workshop is an hour and so by the end of the week if you started out with, I can't do this, there's no way I'm too old. I have an old injury. I don't know how I'm too fat. My blood is too heavy, whatever is standing in your way at the end of that week, you will have successfully practiced three arm balance poses. And I teach foundational ones and I teach them very specifically and in much detail, to make people as successful as possible. And my goal is to take the, I can't do this out of it in one week. And so by the end of the week, people go, holy cow, I can do this. 
Now, do I want to do more of this or do I want to just do what I did this week? And that's fine. So yeah, Yeah. so we we teach the- So I'm definitely going to talk about it on social media because I'm going to be there doing it. Yeah, Yeah, because I'm excited to experience that after having experienced the retreat. So I'm kind of like a backwards person. Yeah, but it'll be fun because she just, and the other thing is she just graduated teacher training. She had done, she did a, a teacher training and a couple of the people on the retreat were do, going through the training and it's a pretty intense process. It's, it takes it four months or some, something yeah, like that. Yeah, four months, 200 hours of uh, in-classroom training plus additional like homework and stuff like that. It's intense, yeah. but we're really committed to producing the best yoga teachers that we can. There's so many yoga teacher training programs out there that don't uphold standards. And I really am committed to making sure people come out of my program really ready to teach. And I believe yoga can change the world. And the more people yeah. have these tools available to them, the better. So I want my folks out there and spreading the love and the knowledge. So yeah, that was really, that was really cool. And we're gearing up to welcome a new class of teachers starting in May. So yeah, I like the fact, oh, and you sell out, you, somebody I saw said that you, that you sold out really quickly. You only That last one we sold out in like two days. Yeah, we wow. opened this one. Uh, we opened it yesterday and we're almost half full already. So these wow. two trainings sell really fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it really differentiates a, a teacher when, when you can teach these different things. I don't know. I just, to me, it's kind of cool. Um, and then like when we would go somewhere, even just, it was just, on the resort property. Oh, and I should say all, you all stay at like really nice resorts. So it's not like any, like, uh, you know, two-star hotel, but people will just like jump into like a pose. They'll just like, you know, and you had a photographer there, which was really cool. So we, yeah. there's so many pictures of every, everybody doing stuff, but yeah. So, uh, the yoga teacher training is on zoom though. You said in person, but in person it's, zoom, it's right? in person. It's like live. It's not pre-recorded. So it's live on zoom for, okay. Okay. for yeah, every Sunday, basically for many weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so what are your retreats next year? Because I'm going to Spain. You are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You mentioned it. I'm so excited. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so Spain is coming up next yeah. in Croatia at the end of June and uh, heading to Bali in September, Mexico at the end of October, and that'll be it for 2022. But yeah, yeah, I, I saw the, I, I was thinking Bali, but um, then I was like, oh, so far. <laughs> so yeah so far great. and so worth it i know i know but i i love spain so much mm. spain and and on that coast of spain and yeah um so and then mexico and mexico is not far so mexico would be cool too so golly i'm gonna have to be like maybe maybe an assistant or something yeah right <laughs> <laughs> going all your retreats with you so yeah and i want to do a retreat so i'm really excited to have not, it won't be a yoga retreat, but I want to do, I, I want to do an event, mm-hmm. but I want to have a retreat aspect to my event. And so I'm really excited that, uh, she's got some, you know, sh- tips for me and she's, you know, ha- has plenty of places she's specked out to anytime. So. I will so chat with you about it. This is my jam yeah. and, uh, and retreats are really transformational. And the beauty of it is you can do any kind of retreat. It doesn't have, you know, you can create it any way you want with, and it's totally like open ended. And that's the beauty of it is we, you can really create something unique. That's yours. That's going to make a huge difference for your people. And I'm excited that you're going to do it. Yeah. 2022. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I did want to give a shout out to Gary because I, I was really curious to meet who your partner was because, you know, you had said that you really had a, you were terrible in, in relationships and you, you know, you just thought, you picked the wrong people and all that kind of stuff. And they were so incredible together. They did such a great job with the retreat and it was so nice to have him there. And there were a couple of guys there. Um, and I think it, it was really great. I have to say too, and I'm not sure if I talked about this much in the, my Greece uh, episode, but when I was talking about the retreat, but one of the women's husband came just to be there, just to be supportive. There are a couple, they live in the UK and, uh, he never done yoga and he was killing it, like doing, and he's like, not somebody who looks like somebody who do yoga either. 
he's just your average kind of Joe in terms of like, you know, uh, appearance and, you know, didn't, he just, I couldn't believe it. He, it did so much for him and for his, his confidence and his excitement. And he was just like a yoga person by the end of the seven days. It was so cool. That's one of my favorite things is people email me all the time. They're like, I want to come and I want to bring my husband, but he doesn't do yoga. He doesn't want to do yoga. Can we still come? And I'm like, yes, rule number one, you do you. You don't want to come to the yoga, come to the meals, like come to the adventure, come to the workouts, come stand on your head and do nothing, sleep all day. I don't care. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is I just love because it's a low pressure environment. People will oftentimes try things that they wouldn't have tried if we were like, you are expected to be there. People would be like, well, I'm not going, I'm not into that. But because we're like, we don't care, come, don't come. We love you anyway. People are like, well, I'll try it. And so many times the husbands that were not into yoga come out and say, I'm going to start doing yoga when I go home. And the, the same thing could go backwards, right? It could be the, the wife who comes or, you know, two wives or two husbands or whatever, but there's always one partner that's kind of like not into it at the outset who is raving about it at the, by the end. So if you're listening to this and you want to go on a retreat, anybody's retreat, not just mine, but you're like, oh man, my significant other won't go for it. Hold them high. Maybe they will, and maybe they'll learn something new. It's, it always blows my mind how people resist. And then by the middle of the trip, they're like, I love this. I'm like, uh-huh, told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I love it that they're open enough to even like, yeah. you know, do it. And the photographer, the same. He didn't, hadn't done yoga. No, right? he was yeah. awesome. We're yeah. bringing him back. He's it. great. That's good. Uh, he's great. Yeah, so is there anything else? I'm going to put everything that has to do with your upcoming three-part workshop, live workshop. Um, and I'll, the, the, the link to the retreat website so that people can look at that. I would say very high quality and very affordable. Thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah, I would just say if, to anybody who's listening, like if you're feeling like stuck in a rut, like just spinning your wheels or like looking for answers or looking for clarity and you're not finding anything, take yourself out of your day to day. And whatever, however you choose to do that, whatever you choose to do, remove yourself from the stuff you see and do and say and hear every day and create the space for yourself. And I know a lot of times we have stories, oh, I have kids and I can't, and I, I watch the grandkids and who's going to water my plants and who's going to feed my dog. There's always a way. There's always a solution. If you're, if you're up against yourself only you can choose to break through. And sometimes it will require doing something completely out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I just say, yeah. like, like, walk yeah. into it, not away from it. Yeah. One thing that just came up in my head is that one of my students recently, she, one of her goals is to get into, to lose some weight and to get a little toned up. And she said, that she was, was going to do some yoga. And I was like, Oh, good. Yeah. That sounds really good. And, and then she made the comment that, but I know that won't get me in shape. And I was like, you, so I would love for you to speak to that because I think there is somewhere out there, a, a miss misinformation that uh, yoga, because I sweat, I sweat more doing less in those workshops than the, on the retreat than I do in like a cardio. Yeah. I mean, there's a big discussion about this, right? And yoga is a holistic practice. It's not a fitness workout. Like it's, it's, it works. It's a work in, right? It works on everything, your soul, your lungs, your, your mind, your heart and your body and yoga by itself. Like if you, if you are a person who's overweight and you don't change your diet and you don't change your sleep and you don't change your stress, but you do some yoga, probably not going to be enough. But if you say, okay, I'm going to do yoga consistently for a month and I'm going to do it every day. And I'm going to, you know, try to keep my diet as clean as possible and get adequate sleep. Like, yes, it will. It will contribute to weight loss. It will contribute to reduce stress, which contributes to weight loss. It'll contribute to getting you fit and strong. It works on your muscles isometrically, meaning Unlike weightlifting, it's not going to build thickness of muscle, but it, it's going to build strong lean muscle. It's great for your core, great for your lower back, great for stabilizing your spine, great for hip mobility, shoulder mobility, all the stuff that we want mobile in order to live out the rest of our life, being able to get up and down off the floor, being able to pick stuff up, up off the floor. It's, it's really, if you want to move and feel good in your body until you die, 
That's why you do yoga among many other reasons, but um, will it get you as fit as a six week intensive boot camp? Probably not, but it's, it's really a much more gentle lifelong practice and there are different styles of yoga, right? So you've got your really relaxing yoga nidra type thing. And then you've got vinyasa and power yoga that's going to kick your butt and make you sweat. So it kind of depends on what yoga you do and how much, how much you choose to, to actually go all in, right? One yoga class a week is not going to do anything for your overall right. fitness, yeah. Yeah. but three times a week, absolutely will. Yeah. Well, that was great. I think that that's really a, a really great explanation because that's so true. Yeah. I think so. Anyway, I bet some people might disagree, but that's my take on it. Well, you know, and I'm just remembering the, the, the phys- physiques of the, the women, especially the ones who are doing the teacher training, because, you know, they're probably doing it more than the other people. They were like, everybody was really in just beautiful bodies. Yeah. Really beautiful, yeah, nice I mean, tone cons- bodies. Yeah. Consistent practice will definitely, uh, get you really strong and that strength mm-hmm. you see it on the outside too. Yeah. But, and I love the way that you were just talking about stress and you know, it's, it's a lot up here too. Yeah. So, it's 90% up here. Yeah. Yeah. We eat well, we were pointing we to, I was pointing to my brain. So my head. So for but those it's those 90% reasons. up in our brains, right? Yeah. We eat because we're stressed. We don't sleep because we're stressed. We like spin our wheels and get all up in our minds about our minds. I mean, it's, it's all in our minds. And if we, uh, if we adopt these practices that hopefully are enjoyable for us, that's like, that's the thing, right? I, I, I love yoga because it's creative. It's fun. It's, I can be a monkey. It reminds me how to be a kid again, how to play. Um, and it's not for everybody. Some people prefer to run. I would, I only run if something is chasing me. Right. So <laughs> it's like, pick, find the thing that lights you up and do it consistently. And that will lead to your holistic health and longevity. It's like when we try to, to force ourselves to do something we don't enjoy, then it's a chore, then we don't do it. And that it just perpetuates the cycle because then we beat ourselves up for not doing it. And then we go into more stress and then, ah! so just pick a thing that you like to do, do a little bit of every and the magic will happen on its own. Yeah. 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 yeah and I was, I was a lot of the time when, you know, I was experiencing a workout with you and what kept coming up for me was like, I can't believe she didn't used to not, she she never did this before, you know, like, like you are so gifted at your teaching and at practice and your body. And like, you're just like, you can tell that you're, it comes from a very deep place and I'm so happy that you found it. I can't imagine your life if you hadn't found it. And it just makes me think like everybody needs to find that thing. And so if they haven't found it, I hope they keep looking and keep yes. looking for it. I yeah. so agree. Yeah. Yeah. And you can go back and listen to the earlier episode because I think we talk about how she found it in that one. So I'll put that uh, reference in the show notes as well. Thanks so much for coming. It was so good to talk to you again and see you. And I know we'll be connecting. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Yeah. I appreciate it. All righty. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into the Not Your Average Lives podcast. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe on iTunes if you have an Apple device. You can find free resources and learn what else I have going on at the moment that might interest you on my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you liked this episode, it would make my heart so happy if you could leave me a five-star rating. You can also add a review to let me know what you like about this podcast, which will help spread the word about it to others who need a little midlife inspiration. As always, be you, listen to your inner voice, and focus on reigniting that lost spark so you can start living your own, not your average life. Thank you.